We're planting summer squash as well as celery. That and a whole lot more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by for all your non-GMO organic and heirloom vegetable flowers and herb seeds visit dollarseed.com Sioux Growing Supply located in Wausau Wisconsin focusing on certified leaf compost an excellent amendment for poor soil retains moisture and adds nutrients which equals less water available in labor saver pre-filled trays and pots, bag and bulk. Visit SueCompost.com. Organic fertilizer for the health conscious organic home gardener. Family owned and operated. Visit WGardens.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind and soil hose filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew. Visit ManureTea.com. No measuring, no thinking. Stamp it, plant it, stop plotting, start planting. GardenStamp.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're up in our summer squash bed where we have prepared the bed about a month ago by adding a couple of handfuls of Epsom salt and several shovelfuls of certified leaf compost to start enriching the soil before we even think about planting our squash. Well, the time has come to go ahead and plant our summer squash. Now, if you've ever planted summer squash, you know that you don't need much to get a lot. One thing we have had a hit and miss with here at the large garden is the squash vor vine, vine moth. Sometimes it hits and kills some of our squash, sometimes we're able to catch it, sometimes we have no problem at all. Now there's a couple of different techniques to planting summer squash. One is the hill method and the other is just placing it right in the ground just like any other vegetable. Now the benefit to planting in a hill, the ideal concept to this, and we've got two mounds of hill or two hills here and we're going to go two without hills. The, the ideal is if you have really clay soil, this is the best I, method for you to plant because you're flipping the soil up, you're mounding it, you're loosening the soil up, which allows the seedling to establish good roots. As well as if you have clay soil, water tends to set in clay soil. Clay soil is full of nutrients, but it's so densely packed that it can't uh, uh, drain properly. So by elevating your hill of squash, this allows the roots not to set in water, which is detrimental to squash. They like water, they just don't like swimming in it. So if you have clay consistency soil, one you can add leaf compost, or you can elevate it into a hill or mound. Now we've got this about three inches high by about a foot across. We're gonna put three seeds in each, each hill and where we don't have hills, we're just gonna go put two seeds. So we're gonna plant two, three different varieties. We've got a one ball zucchini that we have started uh, about three weeks ago. We're gonna go ahead and put that in the far end there, as well as black zucchini, black beauty zucchini, and Pacific yellow straight neck. So it's a yellow zucchini, a green zucchini, or a dark green zucchini, and then this is a one ball that actually is a yellow zucchini that is in the shape of a pool, a ball that you would play pool with. It's, it's a unique type of squash. So we're just going to, we have not pre-soaked the seeds and you can do that if you so choose to. Now with seeds of this type, uh, we're going to start with this mound here with the black zucchini. We're going to do black zucchini, yellow zucchini, a mixture of both and then whichever one in this third pile is the best will well, probably, depending on how we feel, we may leave both of them in there. Down here, we're going to take out the two weakest ones. Here, for the fun of it, we may just leave both. And down there on the far end, in bed number or spot number four, we will put the one ball zucchini. So with doing this, you want to do it uh, in the construction term as a crow's foot. So you kind of want to go two up front, one in the back. You can just nestle your hand down in there, down to your knuckles, and that should be uh, the depth that you need. 
Now, this is the black zucchini. We're gonna take three seeds here. Now, when planting the seeds, yeah, you could just throw it in there and go, okay, it's good enough. But if you want more successful potential for germination, you wanna put your seed to where it is the, whoa, where the seed, I'll demonstrate this way, the seed is facing upwards instead of flat because the plant will crack the seed and then it will start to grow upwards. So if you can do that, you're gonna put less stress on that plant. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna nestle that down. And if you're not certain how deep that is, that's about a cold, about a half inch. It'll be a safe depth to plant your squash in. So now that's done, cover it up, and we will go ahead and plant uh, two, three, and then we'll get the already started one ball planted at the far end. All right, so with planting these, we are going to top dress them and then gently work in some all-purpose Winchester Garden vegetable fertilizer, the 466, and you can do this prior or following planting. You just want to, the proper application rate, just mix it in, and when you water it, it will trickle down into the area of the seeds. So again, this is with the yellow squash or Pacific now, when is the perfect time to harvest squash? Well, that is to the discretion of the gardener. The thing you want to avoid is letting the plant go and then seeing, oh, look, I've got a squash that's 27 inches long. The problem with that, though it's cool and you can impress your, uh, your non-gardening friends, the problem with that is that plant is putting all its nutrients into that one particular fruit because the plant is designed to put seeds on and not necessarily produce fruit for us. All right, so now we're in spot number three and we're gonna do one yellow and one black beauty just for the fun of it because we know we're gonna have good establishment up there and we have an abundance of zucchini. It's of zucchini, zucchini relish is a great use for it as well as you can dehydrate it as also. So we've marked where these, where we prepped the beds before. So we're just going to, I'm gonna separate these by about shovel width, why not? We'll put one there. One there, one seed in each spot. Vertically up, pointed up uh, with the seed sideways. And we'll put this one here. Now with the one ball here, we're just gonna put one plant down there. All right, with this one, we're going to plant squash. You wanna plant, if you do start it indoors or prior to putting it outside, you wanna plant it at the same depth of the as it is, it's not gonna put any more roots on it. It's not part of the nightshade family. It's just best to plant it at the same depth that it is in the container. And that's what we're gonna do. All right. These one inch containers work excellent for this. If you ever can get a hold of a bunch of these, do it. It will really save you a lot of time and effort and it perfect uh, root ball on this and you're not cramming a bunch of plants in one container and you're having to rip the roots apart. So if you can get these, I guess these are about two inch square containers, makes your life a whole lot easier when transplanting. So we'll put that in there and there it is. We'll come back and water these in and that's how simple it is to plant summer squash. Again, you wanna be careful how much you plant because if it does per grow perfectly, you're gonna have an abundance of squash. Well, we've grown cilantro here in our kind of uh, makeshift raised bed that we did back behind the garage. And it's really nice because it's, we've had a cool spring, a cool beginning to what's gonna be summer. And so this has taken off really well. We went ahead, we just planted it. As you can see, it kind of grew in bunches on its own. And I'm gonna go ahead and snip some back. And cilantro is nice, it's an herb. It's got a lot of great benefits for you. Um, I believe it's a blood cleaner as well. And you can add it, it's using a lot of Asian and Hispanic cooking, or you can just add it, even if you just get some jarred salsa from the store, you just chop it up, put it in there, it'll add a nice fresh flavor to it. So I'm gonna go ahead, trim some of this back and, and take it home and use it. And it's easy to plant. You just go ahead, put the seeds in. And once it gets warm though, it, is, it will bolt once it gets a little too hot. It's not the air temperature, it's actually the soil temperature. So even if it's like 85 outside, if you've had a few cool nights, it won't necessarily bolt until the soil starts to warm up. So cilantro is a nice spring herb, late spring to early summer herb that you can grow. It has a lot of different uses and like any other herb, has great benefits. 
Lavender is actually a perennial, and we started this from seed. You can buy a lavender already planted, you know, at your local garden center, but we started this from seed. We got this, uh, the seeds actually from dollarseed.com. And so from what I've read and understood is once you've got the little leaves on here, then it's ready to plant. You might not get a lot your first year, but then your second year, you're gonna get a lot of beautiful lavender. It's not invasive, but it will kind of spread when you start it from seed. If you buy it already established, it won't really spread. It's also not good to separate it once you've got it established. It, it doesn't like to separate itself. So I'm just gonna put it in the corner here of the um, this flower bed we already have established. There was no flowers here. So there's just some grass and stuff. So I figured this would be a good spot for it since there's already some other perennial flowers in the bed. And lavender is, smells really nice. It's nice and purple. It looks pretty. It, I'm sure attracts all sorts of bugs, good bugs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get that in there. So there you have it. Lavender is just one another flower for your garden. So we're in our celery bed and we've already established three, six, nine, eleven plants. We had one that didn't make it. Now the key to planting celery, some garden centers may still have some available. It is a plant that takes a very long time to get started inside. You want to start this 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. You want to put it outside when the night temperatures are consistently above 50 degrees. If you don't do that and you have, let's say, a span of two weeks of night temperatures below 50 degrees, it will react and go and you'll have not celery, but you'll have a bunch of celeries with a lot of seeds on it. They'll instantly go to creating seeds or they'll bolt, basically, because it's too cold. So we've got 11 plants there. We've got the rest of these here that we've started, and it's time to bring those out and get those planted. Now, celery is a plant that can grow till it gets too cold and it dies. But what you wanna do is you wanna wait until that first light frost, then harvest it because it becomes much, much sweeter. And celery can be dehydrated. It can also keep in the crisper in the fridge for a good amount of time, not forever. But based on how much celery you might consume as a family, you can dehydrate some, or and you can also store it in the refrigerator. So obviously eating the celery fresh is, is the best thing. Now, obviously you're not going, this is a self-blanching celery. Some celery you have to let it get established and, then, and cover the bottom so it bleaches out. This is self-blanching. So it's not gonna be like the kind you'll see in the store exactly, but it'll be much crisper and much fresher tasting and eating it fresh is obviously the best option, but dehydrating is a second, a close second to that. So what we have done prior to this bed is we've worked a lot of, we've worked uh, Sioux certified leaf compost in this bed, as well as a good amount of coffee, uh, used coffee grounds because it's green, it's a nitrogen, it likes a lot of nitrogen. So we wanna space these out because at time of harvest, these things will get two and a half foot tall and bush out pretty, uh, pretty rapidly. So we're going to certified leaf compost Coffee grounds, we're also gonna add some Winchester Garden all-purpose vegetable 466 to this in the proper application rates, just so we can get the best possible crop of celery we can potentially have, because unlike some gardeners, we have a one-shot deal in Southeast Wisconsin. We can't just grow year-round. So we got that portion done there. Okay, so let's go ahead and space these out. Now I'm going, and you can do this, you know, the, the way, the method that you find most uh, reliable or easy for you. I just take the trial and I space it a trial, just about a trial square there. So we'll go, right there's one, space, right there's another one, space, right there's another one. Since this one's missing, we'll go ahead and put it where it and one there, so we've got a lot of worms here, that's good. So we'll go ahead and get these planted. Now you wanna plant them at the same depth as they are in the container. And we'll, 
and that's pretty much how easy it is to get celery planted. So I'll get these all planted and then we will get them watered in. All right, I got them in. I got three, six, nine, 12 more. So we've got 24 plants in this little bed and that's pretty good. So we're just gonna water them in and then if all goes right, we will have celery come late fall. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preservation. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.